Greetings. Today we're going to look at some socket code to utilize TCP IP to communicate between a client and a server. We'll create a buffer and we will listen on a socket on the server side. On the client side we'll create a buffer and we'll send that buffer over to the server side. The server will receive the buffer and then write back some data. Let's get started. I have some code here where I have all the includes you need. You'll be able to find all of this code out on Canvas as well. But let's step through it. I create a buffer size at 1500 bytes. This is the size of the buffer that we're going to read and write from. And then I created num connections. This is the number of connections that the socket will listen for. As you recall, a socket consists of an IP address and a port number. This will be the server side code. And on the server side, the IP is just ourselves. And so I'm just going to um, listen on my own host, obviously, because that's where the code's running, at a port. And the port I've decided to use is 12345. The port you should use in the Linux lab can be the five last digits of your student ID. If multiple processes try to get to the same port, there'll be a collision. I've allocated a data buffer here of buff size, and I've zeroed it out. Okay, the first thing we need to do is build an address for our server socket to listen on. And that's what this code here does. I create a socket address underscore in type, which is a structure. I zero it out. And then I set three uh, parameters of interest. One, the SIN family I set to AFINet. This says, use the internet. The SIN address dot S address I set to I N address any. This says that the server should listen for any IP address that's trying to connect. Notice I use this HTONL uh, command. This command changes the um, format of the address to something that the network can understand. And then I also sent the port address on my address. This actually needs to be passed to HTONS. Okay, so I've created an accept socket address. Now let's go ahead and create a socket. Here, I create a socket. I say I'm using the internet. Sock stream says use TCP IP. What gets returned is an index into my uh, file descriptor table. So in this case, it'll probably be three. Much like pipes and files all go into the same uh, descriptor table, a socket does as well. So I've created myself a socket. Here's a little trick that you can do in the lab so that when you shut down your system, the socket gets let go of sooner or the port gets freed up sooner. This is uh, called the set sock option and I would suggest that you do this code as well. All right, so I have a socket. On the server side, I need to do three things in order to connect or accept a connection from the client. Bind the address to the socket, tell the socket how many connections to listen for, and then accept a connection. I'm not doing an error checking here. In the code I posted, I do have error checking. But the first thing I do is I bind that socket to that socket address that I created. So here's server SD, which is the first argument to bind. It's just an index into the file descriptor table. And then here's the address that we're listening on. Then for the socket, I go ahead and say, hey, let's listen for five connections. And then finally, I make an accept call on the socket. Now what the accept will return is another socket. So I'm listening, I'm sorry, I'm accepting on a socket, which is a blocking call, and I'm waiting for a client to come and connect. When the client connects, I get back return to socket. Again, this is just an index into the uh, file descriptor table, but that index points to an entry which points to a socket. So I get back a socket. This socket is pointing to the client. Now I can use this socket to read and write from because I've connected now to the client. Let's take a look at that code. So the next thing I do is I am going to read from that socket. So I'm waiting for the client to go ahead and write something. 
And the read call is just like a file, file read call that you've done in the last exercise. Notice read, passing in the descriptor, then the data buffer, and then the size. I go ahead and printed out the first byte of the buffer that we read. Then I went ahead and changed the 13th byte to an R. And I next call write. Pass in the um, descriptor where you want to write to, the data buffer, and then the size. So I've read from the buffer, and now I'm writing into the, in, I'm sorry, I read from the socket, and now I'm writing into the socket. When I'm done with this code, I go ahead and I close the new socket that I got for the client and the server socket, and I'm done. Now I've taken this code and I've copied it over to the Linux lab. Let's go over there. Here I have telneted, I'm sorry, extermed over into the Linux lab. And I'm on machine 0w13206.uwb.edu. I have the server code that we just wrote over on the box, and I go ahead and I build it. It builds fine. I can now run that code. What's happening now is the server is listening and accepting on the socket, listening for any client to connect. In the next video, let's go ahead and create some clients and connect to our waiting server. It will just wait here until we're done.